We're now at the base of the John Ringling Bridge near Bird Key Park, and we've encountered the most intense wind of our entire trip along the Barrier Islands. You can see the white caps behind me. You can see the, barely see the uh, skyline of the city of Sarasota behind me. You can also see a sailboat that obviously broke from its moorings and did not survive Hurricane Francis. But also along the way here at Bird Key Park, we came across some Muslim worshipers worshiping Hurricane Francis. We notice you're, you're kneeling here at the, the base of the bridge. It's an intense, we're in the middle of a hurricane. What's, what, what's going on? Yes, because we fear the power of Allah, you know, the power of God, so that's why we prostrate. We make, we pray for Allah because this is one of God's soldiers. So this is like something great to see, you know? Uh -huh. So that's why we pray because we see the power of God, you know? You're not concerned about your health, your safety or anything? No, if, it's, if something can happen for us, it means it's written for us. Mm -hmm. See, it's written by God if something can happen to us. So in spite of all the high winds, in spite of the intense rains, this is the only casualty we've seen during our survey of the Barrier Islands. When we started heading towards Somerset Tuesday morning, it didn't take long before we hit snow. And the farther south we got, it started to look more and more like a winter wonderland. The snow heavy, downing trees, some suspended by power lines, hanging just feet above the roadway. One so low, our camera captured a semi plow right through. Most people who live near Seven Springs Mountain Resort snowed in, many without power since 10 o'clock Monday night. We're fortunate, miraculous. Usually we're the first to go, but a lot of people up and down the street have lost theirs. You know. Homeowners were busy shoveling themselves out. I start coming down hard closer to midnight. It's heaviest as it ever gets. Yeah, it's slush. Four-wheel drive and I'm stuck in the snow. And the thick, wet snow causing problems for drivers. I was trying, I couldn't turn up there, it was too deep. So I tried backing down and I got off to the side here too far and it was all ice underneath and wouldn't stop. The roads around the resort were for the most part clear, but one entrance was blocked. We found our way onto resort grounds, prancing through thick, unshoveled snow, only to find the slopes empty. Unfortunately, the snow is very dense. It's a five to one ratio. It's like Sierra cement. It's the closest thing to rain, but still being snow. It's very dangerous as far as skiing and packing it down. Uh, we want to keep our customers safe. Maria Miller, Fox 8. Heather Kenny is a close family friend of 15-year-old Matthew Monroe's mom. She says Matthew stopped in the office where both she and his mom work just minutes before the fatal accident happened. The last thing he said to her was that he loved her. No one is exactly sure what happened, but some say Matthew was wearing headphones as he crossed the tracks here at the intersection of Square Street and South Market Avenue in Mount Joy. He was crossing the tracks, and I don't know if he didn't hear his friends say that there was a train coming, and it hit him. The Amtrak train that struck the boy was traveling west from New York to Pittsburgh carrying more than 240 people. It was in a holding pattern for three hours until investigators reopened the tracks. The path where people can walk across is temporarily closed. I, I would hope this leads us to a discussion that perhaps Amtrak and the borough can uh, perhaps have a conversation with PUC get them to authorize closing this. Some people living nearby argue the crossing is especially dangerous because there are no gates warning people of a passing train. There should be a gate there to warn warn people and the, the bell when it rang before you could hardly hear it. The tragedy has shocked this close-knit community as family and friends of little Matthew try to grasp what happened. How is she going to make it? Um, this is her baby. And your heart goes out to the family and I you know, hope to God it doesn't ever happen to your family. The Reds are replacing a legend. For the first time in 20 seasons, Barry Larkin is nowhere in sight. Well, it's sad, you know, on a, on a you know, kind of a personal level, uh, you know, me and him are pretty good, you know, we're, we're pretty good buddies. And, uh, you know, just not, not see him and see his truck parked out there is kind of, you know, it's kind of, kind of a wake-up call. A call that the Reds must Hello. now answer. They need a shortstop. That's why Rich Aurelia joined the team in the offseason. Yeah, but first, he has to battle youngster Felipe Lopez. It's about playing time. It's not personal. You have to you know, take care of yourself, but at the same time, you know, it's a team concept too. You, you want to get along and play together. And you know, he's a, a younger guy. You know, I've been around for a while, and you know, maybe there's some things I can, you know, teach him. Maybe there's some things I can learn from him. Well, Rich is, you know, he's been there, and he's, you know, he knows what, how, to, how to prepare himself. It's going to be interesting. You know, they both can play, and, and uh, you know, obviously the best man to win the job. Aurelia has the pop for the job. He's one of only three shortstops to hit over 30 home runs in a season in the National League. 
thing that happened, I hit 37 home runs one year, and then everybody expects you to do it every year, you know. I mean, I'm a, I'm probably a 20, 25 home run guy, maybe a little bit more. You know, sometimes the expectations, you know, for, from one year, you know, build for years and years, and then they say, what happened? But in that jersey, at that position, the expectations are now part of the job. If it is me playing there, you know, I, you know, I hope the, the fans and everybody accepts me for what I can do and, you know, not compare it to what, what Barry had done because we're two different types of players. In Sarasota, I'm Lowell Galindo, ABC 7 Sports. A heartwarming homecoming with a hug, a kiss, and a tear, a year in the making. A dad seeing his son for only the second time since birth. It was tough, but she sent me lots of pictures and we got the Skype and stuff like that, so it was, it was okay. Got to do what we got to do. It was scary, but we got through it and dad's home safe and all the guys are home safe, so we're very happy. Troops of the 420th Engineers Company embraced by loved ones after serving an 11-month tour of duty in Afghanistan. Happy. I'm glad to be home. It's been a long, long time, been over a year. Oh, this feels great. Long time coming. Couldn't wait for this day. True Americans showing their true colors. <laughs> saluting each soldier for their service and safe return. We had to go do a job and uh, it was hard on everybody to leave home knowing you're going to go for a year. It's hard to deal with, but it has to be done. They have to do it, so you just support them any way you can. It's good that people realize what's going on and what we're doing and uh, it'll be good for them to continue knowing uh, that there's guys out there fighting for them. And enjoying all that home has to offer. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, take a shower without uh, sandals on. Yeah, bare feet. I don't know. Uh, I mean, you just there's so many things you you think about. You just don't know. Uh, just sit on the couch and not really have to worry about doing anything tomorrow. Melanie Gillespie, Six News.